morning and praise the Lord for truly today is the day that the Lord has made. We are rejoicing and glad in it. Amen. It's a day that we've never experienced before, but our God is an awesome God and he reigns in heaven and earth with wisdom, power, and love for our God is an awesome God. Hallelujah. So I just thank God for each and every one of you who are tuning in to this broadcast this morning. I know that the Lord has a word for each and every one of you to encourage you. The broadcast name is The Spoken Word, and I am your host, Pastor Sandra Carter. Um, the, our purpose and our commitment to this broadcast is to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, to give you a word that will uplift you and to encourage each and every one of you. So um, in the dash and in the comments, I've given you some information for those of you who need to listen later, you can listen on our YouTube channel, the spoke, Pastor Sandra Carter, The Spoken Word, to see today's broadcast later on today, as well as any past broadcasts. And I'm going to ask that you share this link, share this information with your friends and family, because I know that we all need to understand the Word. We all need to be lifted up and encouraged. We all need to know who God is in our lives and what He's able to do. So share the gospel. And then also in the link in the comments, if you would like to give um, to this ministry, if you consider sowing into this ministry, you can click on the link to Givelify. If it doesn't take you directly to the Shield of Faith uh, page, uh, it will show an address of 173 North Land Park Court. Uh, you can also copy and paste it. And for those who know me personally and have my cell phone number, you can give through Zelle. Uh, using my number. But with that said, let's move forward because I know God has a powerful word for you today because as I was preparing the message and listening to God, it really uplifted me. The title of the broadcast today, I am whatever you need me to be. Oh, Jesus, I am, I am whatever you need me to be. And my prayer this morning is that you receive something from God, that you be uplifted and that you understand that no matter what you're going through, God can fix it. God can do what needs to be done to get you through your trials, your tribulations, to uplift you, to, to amend your brokenness. He can do whatever, hallelujah, you, he can be whoever you need him to be in your life today. So, Father God, we just thank you, O oh God, for the word that's about to go forth today. I surrender myself to you, O oh God, and move myself out of the way and ask, O oh God, that the Holy Spirit that's within me rise up to speak the word to your people, O oh God, with boldness and with clarity. I pray, O oh God, that you anoint these lips of clay, O oh God, so that I will only speak the truth of what the word of God says, not add to the word, not take away from the word, but what the word of God says, because you have given us this broadcast, the spoken word to deliver the message to the people. Open up their ears, O oh God, to hear and receive what you have for them. And Father God, hallelujah, that those who do not know you who have not accepted you let them have that desire and put it on their heart to accept you as lord and savior before the end or by the end of this broadcast i know that you're able to do it because your word said ask and it shall be done and i know oh god hallelujah that the word does not return void but it will and it shall accomplish what it's sent out to do these things i ask in jesus mighty name amen and amen. Hallelujah. So with that said, I'm going to ask that you get your pa uh, paper and pens because this broadcast is usually within an hour or less. Write down the scriptures and study them during the week. Use what we give you today as your guide for study for the week because it is the word of God, the spoken word. Hallelujah. So I'm going to ask that you get your Bible or write down the scripture and listen tentatively to what the word of God says out of Ephesians chapter three, verse 20. I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. There's a lot of different interpretations. There's a lot of different Bibles, but I, I go between King James. I go between uh, Amplified and sometimes NIV, but this scripture is from the Amplified Bible. It says this beginning with verse 20. Now to him, who is him? God is him who is able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly 
not just abundantly, but super abundantly, more than all that we dare ask or think, infinitely beyond our greatest prayers, hopes, and dreams, according to his power that is at work within us. Hallelujah. So the Bible teaches that God's sovereignty sovereignty is an essential aspect of who he is, that he has supreme authority and absolute power over all things. No matter how big your situation is or unlikely something is, God can fix it. God can be involved and should be involved and he can turn every situation around. God can do it. There are no limits to what God to do can do. Men, women, we are limited in power and what we're capable of doing, but God has no limits. We say it, God has no limit to what he can do. We hear it, but do you believe it? Hallelujah. And that's the key. You can hear a thing. You can hear what the word of God says, but you've got to get to the place where you believe what the word of God says. You, in spite of what you go through, you got to have the faith to stand on what the word of God says. You got to believe it in order to receive hallelujah from God. So most definitions of the word limit Hallelujah, because there's no limit to what God can do. Hallelujah. Limit expresses a point of, or level beyond which something is not to extend or pass. There's a limitation. Hallelujah. But God is limitless. There is no limitation in, in God's capability. So another key word in the verse beyond is beyond. It means it is outside the understanding our understanding, hallelujah, because we stand in amazement. How did God do that? Because we, it, what he does is outside of our understanding. We can't figure it out, but we know that he does and he will, and he does things according to his will and purpose. There's no limits or reach of past beyond comprehension. It may also be referenced to a boundary that ceases to be possible, a measure which cannot be exceeded, an amount that cannot be calculated. You can't figure it out. They can't. I, you, you stand in awe and say, how is this possible? It goes beyond our imagination. We can't even imagine, hallelujah, the things that God is able to do in our lives. When we read scripture, especially the apostle Paul, he understood who God was. He knew the facts about his capabilities. Amen. Some of us have experienced things in our lives. Hallelujah. That hallelujah gets us to the place where we know about God. Hallelujah. And this is what he has done. This is a fact of what he has done in our lives. And I'm going to give you some examples later. Hallelujah. But he has capabilities of beyond our imagination. Paul experiences power time and time and time again. He wanted you, me, and every person to know everything about God is beyond us and there's no limit in his capability and, and in his capacity. Therefore, when we are specifically told by David in Psalm uh, 22, you, you need to pay attention to what he said. Listen to uh, each one of these versions. I'm giving you three different versions of what Psalms 22 says. He says, cast your burden on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. Amen. Did you hear it? Cast your burden on the Lord. The next one says, give your bur burdens to the Lord and he will take care of you. He will not permit the godly to slip and fall. And then this last one says, pile your troubles on God's shoulders. Amen. Here, carry your load. He'll help you out. Amen. So you need to cast your burden. You need to give your burden. You need to pile your troubles on God's shoulder. You need to stop carrying them around, worrying and fretting about how am I going to meet this need? What is going to God? How, how am I going to overcome this situation? Hallelujah. How am I going to have victory over this temptation? Give that burden to God. Give it to the Lord. Hallelujah. He said he'll carry your load and he'll help you out. Even in 1 Peter 5, 7, the Amplified Bible says, casting all your cares. He didn't say some. He didn't say one. He didn't say every other care. He says all your cares. 
all your anxieties, all your worries, and all your concerns once and for all on him. We tend to cast it on him, but then, hallelujah, we take it back. We start worrying about it. We fall on our knees. We, we uh, cry before the Lord. And then when we get up, the first indication that some, that, that situation still exists, we worry and fret over. He says once and for all, bec why? Because for he cares about you with deepest affection and watches over you very carefully. He knows what you, you're going through. He's watching over your situation. We need to just let go and let God cast it, give it to him, pile it up on him. Nothing's too difficult and too big for him to handle. God can handle it. And again, there's no limit to what he can do. He is telling us, I am. Oh, Jesus, whatever you need me to be to handle, to help you the, in the distresses of life, the ups and the downs. Imagine, uh, you, we know that our life could be like a roller coaster. It's up and down. We're up high and praising God because everything's fine and dandy. But then later on, suddenly can happen. And then we crash and go down, amen, and, and into a spiral. And then we reach our low points where we cry out and we scream to our Lord. But you know what? He hears and he knows what's uh, happening. He's not going to let you fall. When you turn to God in prayer, when you seek his face, as we offer worship and praise, yes, even in our trouble, God is telling you, I am whatever you need me to be. And you need to tell him, Lord, I know who you are. You are king of kings, Lord of lords, the bright and morning star. You are everything that I need. Hallelujah. So I am, God has said, I am whatever you need me to be. Hallelujah. Are you receiving this today? Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm telling you, this message blessed my soul. Ooh, Jesus. Calm down, Sandra. It was the will of the Father, the great I am, according to Ephesians 1.19, when Paul talks about incomparable great power for us who believe. Are you a believer? Are you? If you're a believer, you should know what God is able to do for you. If you've accepted Christ, that's the first thing he did. He saved you. He forgave you of your sins and remembered them no more. Because he is, hallelujah, a deliverer. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly realms far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but the, the, the age that's to come. Listen, if you have the faith to believe and expect God to move on your behalf, on our behalf, maneuvering his way to get us through the trials, because that's the God that we serve. He can maneuver. He can move situations. He can push people aside. He can put things in place. He can create things, amen, to get us to where he needs us to be. It's not for us to wonder how God is going to do it. Because he will, because all things are possible. And even if we've been in this trial for months, maybe even years, we should not worry or fret of when God is going to get us out of it. Because what you need to understand about God, he is not within our time. He's within his own time. But he is always woo, on time. Hallelujah. Let me say that again. He is always on time. Daddy Peoples, I think that was that singer's name. He said, I'm on time God. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. He is an on time God. And when we get into a place where, hallelujah, time is ticking away and we're still in that same situ situation, just think about that song. I'm an on time God. Oh, yes, he is. He's an on-time God. Oh, yes, he is. Hallelujah. Just repeat it over. And over. He is an on-time God. Yes, he is. So at that point, the I am is whatever you need to 
him to be. Hallelujah. And because he is an on-time God, he is the timekeeper. Hallelujah. He is the timekeeper. He is your timekeeper. Hallelujah. If we just trust in him. Hallelujah. There are times when it is up, is, is up, it is up you where you are up and you're excited. Hallelujah. About what God is doing in your life. You've been promoted in the workplace. You just bought a new house. And you don't know your credit score was below 600. Hallelujah. But God is your banker. Hallelujah. At that time, he's whatever you need him to be. He knows all because he observes everything that you do. He knows your actions and he knows your thought. He knows your heart because he looks at your heart. That's what the word of God says in 1 Samuel 16. Because of God and who he is, his attributes, he is El Shaddai, which means almighty God or God is able. Hallelujah. He is all things possible and impossible, all things certain and not as certain. He is ultimate authority over all things. He is in control. When things are happening, we see on the news, we have to say to ourselves, God is, hallelujah, still in control. When we get disappointed, we need to know and say to ourselves and out loud sometimes, God is still in control, hallelujah, because the I am is our blessed assurance telling us that, hallelujah, in spite of what we go through, Isaiah 41, 10 says, fear not, hallelujah, for I am, hallelujah, did you get it? I am with you, hallelujah. He said, be not dismayed, for I am, hallelujah, your God, hallelujah, and because I am whatever you need me to be, he says, I will strengthen you. He's able to strengthen you so he can be your strength. I will help you. I would open uphold you with my righteous right hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he is the one that will hold you. Hallelujah. So you won't stumble and fall. Hallelujah. So the mountains of, 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 of situations won't overtake you because as the, the situation begins to fall deeper and deeper, he can pull you out of, hallelujah, that valley, hallelujah, that you're in. The I am with his righteous right hand is able to keep you from stumbling and present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy, even as you go through, hallelujah, that he's holding you up, hallelujah, with his right hand. You can have joy because it is the joy of the Lord that is your strength. Hallelujah. When you're going through, you still should be worshiping and praising him because we know who he is. He is whatever you need him to be. Hallelujah. He is the great I am. Hallelujah. Throughout the scriptures, as you read scripture, the right hand is used as a picture of strength and, and capability. When scriptures use the image of God's right hand, it is meant to be a picture of the pinnacle of his strength and his ability. He is saying that he will use his power and his authority to deliver his people from the curse of sin and, and bless them with the, his presence and his salvation. I'm telling you what the word of God says. Hallelujah. I know, hallelujah, what I'm talking about because I've experienced his love, his righteousness, his abilities time and time again. Hallelujah. Do you think you woke up on your own ability this morning? No, God did it. Hallelujah. He was the one that said, here's another day for you to bless me. Here's another day for you to praise me. Hallelujah. Here's another day for me to be a blessing in your life. Hallelujah. Here's another day for you to share the gospel with somebody who don't know me. Hallelujah. Here's another day for you to testify of my goodness. Hallelujah. In the time of trouble. Hallelujah. We need to be a walking living testimony about the goodness of God. Hallelujah. Because we are walking living proof that he was whatever we needed him to be. Oh, Jesus. In Psalm 63, David writes of his enemies trying to kill him. And we all have enemies that try to hurt us and cause harm. But you know what? When the enemy comes in like a flood, hallelujah, with the devil try to make for bad, he turns around to make it for our good and for his glory. 
He, this is what David said in the drying and parched land where there was no water. He finds that the Lord extended his right hand. He said, I cling to you. Your right hand upholds me. We need to recognize that right hand that lifts us up and that holds on, that we can hold on to, amen, just like David did. Even when we prayed the prayer that Jesus taught the disciples to pray in Matthew 6, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one, but we still fall. Because of times we struggle with ten, sin. Even though we say, lead us not into temptation, we still sometimes fail because our flesh is weak. We don't allow the Holy Spirit once we accept Christ who dwells in us to, to carry us and to speak in our ear and we listen and follow his instruction. Even when we are warned, hallelujah, and told to watch and pray so that we do not fall in temptation, the I am is whatever you need him to be in. That is, hallelujah, that is the God of our life who is able to keep us from falling into temptation. He knows the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He knows it. He tells us, lead us not into temptation. We ask, lead us not into temptation, but he knows that we are weak. He recognizes it, but when we mess up, we can go to him and say, God, forgive me. And we know, hallelujah, that we know that whatever we need him to be, and that is a God who forgives our sins. He is, and he will, the I am. He is the I am who will supply us with a fresh supply of mercy and of grace. Hallelujah. God displays mercy. He doesn't treat us as if our as our sins deserve because Jesus Christ took the punishment on the cross. He also extends grace. He treats us to blessings that we have not earned. Ooh, are you understanding that? God's grace is greater than your shortcomings, your failures, your weakness, your sinful desires, feelings of inadequacy and your own self image. He blesses us in spite of our shortcomings. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears and delivers them out of the troubles. The Lord is near to those who are brokenhearted and saves such as have a contrite spirit. I know that I am. I know and beginning to grasp, I'm beginning to grasp even greater the magnitude of who and what God is capable of doing. And he is, and I know that he is, can do things beyond our scope and our, our comprehension. Did you hear what I just said? Let me pause for six seconds and let you take that in. Oh, Jesus. He is capable of doing, and he is able to do things beyond our comprehension and our scope. Let me give you some examples and why I'm so excited and how I recognize God's abilities and who he is and then that I know that he is whatever I need him to be. Hallelujah. For some time with my family, my, my, my mother, my father, my sister, my brothers, my grandparents died. Each time I needed God's hand to not only wipe away my tears, but to be that special and unique and extraordinary seamstress. Hallelujah. Did you hear me? I needed him to be a seamstress. What are you talking about? That could, that could do the impossible. And what was that? To mend my broken heart. Hallelujah. You know what a seamstress do? They sew things together. They repair things. God was my seamstress to repair my broken heart. Oh, Jesus. I'm hoping that you feel what I feel. I'm hoping that you hear the magnitude of what I'm talking about 
the the ability to do what he's able to do. When I was about to have surgery several years ago, ooh, I needed comfort because I didn't want, I was becoming fearful. I knew God was able to heal my body, but I needed comfort because that enemy was trying to put fear on my heart, being placed under anesthesia, being cut on. God can help us see and feel God's glory so powerful that we are free from sin. That's what Isaiah 12, 2 says. That's why we have to go to the word. That's why we have to read the word. That's why we have to trust the word. That's why we have to study the word. That's why we have to speak the word out loud. But you know, in my prayer time, even before I went into surgery, I said, Lord, I need you. God sent someone to assist my surgeon, my doctor in the operating room. A doctor came in to introduce themselves to me prior to me being rolled into that room. Someone who I had never met before, who I had never heard before, who I had never seen. And when she introduced herself to me, oh Jesus, I knew God was with me. She said, hi, Sandra. Ooh. She said, my name is Dr. Lord. Woo! Woo! I'm sitting here crying. Ooh. A peace came over me, hallelujah, that I, cannot I can't describe to you. He sent Dr. Lord to be with me. Oh, Jesus. Are you getting what I'm saying? Are you feeling what I'm feeling? Are you understanding? Hallelujah. Woo. I can't help but to cry. Because I feel the joy. And I, I, and I, I, I want you to be encouraged to know that God hears and feels your every cry. He fulfills your every need. Listen to what 2 Corinthians 1, 4 says. Blessed and gratefully praised and adored be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, the God of all comfort, who comforts and encourages us in every trouble so that we will be able to comfort and encourage those who are in any kind of trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. So some of you who are listening or who will hear this message later, hallelujah, are going through some things that where you need comfort. Hallelujah. My husband, hallelujah, I told you about a month ago, he was in the hospital and they found out that he has a, a situation that he needs surgery. Hallelujah. But, oh Jesus, but we know God is able. And it turns out that if he had not gotten, gotten that infection that caused him to go into the hospital for uh, several days. I think he was there for six days. He had a UTI and they had um, uh, to determine what type of infection, other infection was in his body. So they did an MRI. Hallelujah. But in that process, hallelujah, when, when people say, oh no, he's in the hospital again, but God was with him because in the process of him being in the hospital, them uh, doing x-rays and MRIs, they found that he had stones in his gallbladder. He didn't have any symptoms of it. He's not in any pain. Hallelujah. But he, they found these stones. So when we met with the doctor, they recommended that they take his gallbladder out. And he doesn't mind me telling his testimony. He told me, share it with you. Because when people look and say, oh no, he's got to have surgery, but God set it up so he's getting, it's called preventive medicine. Because you don't want those stones to move and cause blockage anywhere and that can cause death, amen? But God set it up so they can find it in advance so the problem can be fixed 
in advance. When we go through things, we have to look at the big picture, not just the small box, the situation that we're in at that time. God knows ahead of time what we need before we even get there. He set it up where he had to go into the hospital, have the MRI done to see the gall, gallstone so it can be removed so it wouldn't cause any further problems, even though he had no pain. That's what the God can do. I am whatever you need to, me to be. Hallelujah. You know my husband's other testimony where last year, April 2022, he was stricken, hallelujah, with diabetes. He, his glucose level had reached a level of 725. He didn't have diabetes before that. We found out because I know this some things, some changes. We got to pay attention to our family members, y'all. Hallelujah. And he went to the doctor and his doctor sent him to another place to get tested. And that, that the, the, the guy, the doctor who manages the diabetes sent him over to emergency. We had never met this doctor before. Hallelujah. That sent him to emergency. He said, you need to go now. And he went in. Hallelujah. When he left the hospital, he was on insulin three times a day. Two months later, it was twice a day. Hallelujah. But I can re I can say that in September of the same year, within six months, God is a healer. He said, I am whatever you need to me to be. I am a healer. He said, I am a healer. Within six months, he was off the insulin. And since that time, he's managed, hallelujah. And his level is, hallelujah, under 120. Don't tell me what God won't do. Those of you who are on insulin today, those of you who are struggling with diabetes, hallelujah, God can heal you. But you got to make some changes in your life. If he said, don't eat this, don't eat it. Hallelujah. If he says, change your diet, change your diet. We got to use wisdom, people. God is able. And I'm not even going to, hallelujah, hug it or Sunday. And it, there was a time in 2020 during the COVID pandemic, hallelujah, I was at a place of despair and desperation where I needed God, my husband needed God, and I needed access to God. I needed him to hear my cry. The I am, I needed him to be the I am, to be the listener, to bend his ear towards me as I petitioned him for help. I remember Psalms 86 that said, give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my cry of supplication. In the day of my trouble, Hallelujah. I call on you for you answer me. My faith had to act through heartfelt prayer. I needed him. I needed God to be the, I am to be the sustainer of life for, hallelujah, my husband, because this was a life and death situation. I needed the I am, the sustainer who was able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly more than all that we dare ask or think, infinitely beyond our greatest prayers, hopes, and dreams. When the hospital was calling me with despair, doom and gloom, hallelujah. I stood on God's word, hallelujah. My husband was on, hallelujah, a ventilator. He has provided so much proof through my life that he can do, will do, and has done. Hallelujah. I just have to share it. I have to do his will. Somebody needs to know, hallelujah, that what he did for one, he'll do for you because he is the I am, the sustainer of life. He was, and you know some of you heard this testimony, but some of you haven't. He, between the hospital and rehab, he was in gone from this house for 75 days. Hallelujah. Two weeks on a ventilator with COVID. His kidneys were shutting down. He was given dialysis multiple times. Blood transfusion. Hallelujah. On the vent. We needed the I am to, to be the healer, the sustainer, and anything else. The doctor in the sick room, the great physician. 
and he proved himself. He was the doctor, the nurse, the neurologist, hallelujah, the, the, the kidney specialist. He was everything that my husband needed. And today he is home. Oh, Jesus, don't tell me what God can't do. You need to hear it. He said, I am whatever you need me to be. Call out. Let him say, Lord, I need you to be my banker. Lord, I need you to be my healer. Lord, I need you to be my deliverer because some of you are struggling with alcohol and, and you want to stop smoking, but you can't. You're struggling with obesity, but you can't lose weight. Some of you need to call out what you got, what you need God to be for you in your life. And when you call it out, believe it that he is able to do it and will do it for you. Throughout scripture, God is described as the one who sustains all things. You can find that in Hebrews 1 and 3. To sustain something means to give it strength, to give it protection, to give it encouragement and comfort. God's sustainment is a holding together with a power that suppresses anything that a human can do. What you need to understand is this. Oh, the doctors did not know what COVID was. They did not fully understand that, how to treat it. They didn't know what they were doing, but God knew he, and he gave, hallelujah, the doctors the wisdom needed to deal with this desperate situation. Some of you are brokenhearted today because you've lost your child, hallelujah. Oh, God can mend your broken heart. He can heal your hurt. He can hurt, heal your pain. He can, hallelujah, bring joy back in your life again. All you have to do is ask him and seek him and tell him what you need from him. Romans eleven thirty six says everything, everything, everything comes from God. Everything exists by his power and everything is intended for his glory. We give God praise and it's God that did it. It's nothing that I did. It's nothing my husband did. It's nothing that you and uh, you and you and you did. It's what God is able to do. Hallelujah. Because he wants to get the glory. I, it is my prayer that you understand and have full comprehension of God's immense power and love that he has for us. And he is able to, can do above what we ask or think able describes that which has sufficient or necessary power, means, skill, and the resources to accomplish any objective. God is able to do more than you ask and more than you can even imagine. So much more that is not, it's not even possible to measure. That's from the scripture that I read this morning as we began the sermon, Ephesians 3.20. He is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above, amply more than what we can even do. Even in 2 Corinthians 9 and 8, it says, and God, and God, the I am, hallelujah, I am whatever you need to, me to be. I am able to bless you abundantly so that all things at all times, all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work, all things at all times. Are you hearing me? He's not picking and choosing. He says all things at all times. I am whatever you need me to be. God is whoever you need me to be. God can do anything except fail. Hallelujah. You heard the song. Hallelujah. He's able. We used to sing that in the choir. He's able. We sung that. Hallelujah. He's able. And as a choir member, I used to jump and shout most of the time because I took in the words that I was saying. I was singing it out of my mouth, hearing it in my ears, and it got into my heart. So when I was singing praise and clapping, on, I get to shout because I knew what those words meant. I wasn't just singing words be, to open my mouth, hallelujah, to, to show out. I was doing it because I know God is able. And since that time I was in a choir, he has proved himself over and over and over again. I am whatever you need me to be. He is whomever you need him to be. God can do anything. 
He is able to make you stand. He is able to establish you and you're going out and you're coming in. He's able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before his glory. That's Jude 24. He's telling you this morning, I am whatever you need me to be. Hallelujah. Are you getting it? When Moses first encountered God and was told to go and lead God's people out of slavery, he asked God, what should he say if the people who asked, who, who he was going to see ask, who sent him? And you know what God said? You know what his reply was? This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am who has sent me to you. If you don't believe me, write it down, read it, Exodus 3.14. I am able to be your deliverer was the will of the Father. And because he delivered them from, hallelujah, Egypt, hallelujah, they reached the dead end. But God was able to part the Red Sea for his children to, hallelujah, escape Pharaoh's army. And he fought the battle because when they went through, hallelujah, the Red Sea on dry land, hallelujah, Pharaoh's army tried to follow him through. But you know what happened, hallelujah? The sea overtook them and they drowned. That's the power of God. Even Daniel said, God, whom we serve, is able to save us from the burning, fiery furnace. And he would carry us out of your hand. Woo. He's able. He didn't get burned. They didn't get burned. They didn't get scorched. And you know what? The clothes didn't even smell like smoke. And when we go through trials and tribulations, amen, we should not look like we've been beaten down, drugged through the mud. Woo! We should look like, hallelujah, nothing is happening. And the only thing that we're doing, hallelujah, is saying, God is able. He delivered us. Hallelujah. He brought us through. That's what it, that's what we should, that's what people should recognize. Hallelujah. Not the fact that we've been going through looking sad, gaunt. Ooh, we should reflect God and his image. Ooh, I am able to give you strength to rise above trials and, and not fall when you're tempted. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with temptation, he will also provide. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's your tour guide. The way of escape that you may be able to endure. it. I am whatever you need to be whatever you need me to be. I'm your tour guide. I'm your map quest. Woo. I'm the one that can direct you. You know, when, when you need some direction, you, you turn on this uh, navigation system in your car. God is your navigation system. I am whatever you need to me to be. Your navigation system to provide the way of escape. If you're fearful, Psalms 27, he is our light and salvation and the strength of our life. Therefore, we should not be afraid. He's also our protector. He lifts us above our enemies by setting us upon a rock. You need to study and read that Psalms 27. I am whatever you need me to be. I am your miracle worker. It was the will of the Father to raise Lazarus from the dead. When he had even been dead, he had been dead for three days and laid in a tomb. And God, Jesus said, come. And he rose. I'm able to be your, your source. We need to put our trust and security in something or someone that cannot be taken from us. God is that somebody. I 
am whatever you need to be, me to be. I am your source. I am your provider. I am your way maker. Your job shouldn't be your security. Woo, your job is only the channel. But God is your source. God can even control the hands and guide the hands of the doctors as you go before for, 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 for surgery. You just need to trust and believe. God, I am whatever you need to me to be. I'm your shepherd. I'm your provider. It was the will of the Father to feed the multitude with two fish and five loaves of bread. So as I near the closing, he not only provides you with physical food and nourishment, he feels, fulfills your spiritual hunger and need. He said, I am, ooh, I am, I am, I am the bread of life. John 6, 35 says, Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall never hunger and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. He said, I will complete you. I am everything you need, everything you need me to be in your life. I am everything that you need to deal, survive this corrupt world. I don't have to remind you of everything that you are experiencing and seeing happen. You, you watch the news, you're living in this world. But let me just say this. We live in a time that is not like any other time that we've seen because Jesus is soon to come. They stopped prayer in schools years ago. Now they're, they're this, they want to take books out of schools. They don't want us to know about us our people, your people. They want to take cursey where they can't sign, but put an X on a dotted line. But you know what they continue to hand out and keep in schools? Condoms. That's because we live in a corrupt world. People go to church. Some go to church every week, but they're not saved. Yeah, your name is on the church roll, but been, having your name on the church roll will not get you to heaven. Take that in. I'm speaking the truth. Sadly, sadly, so many people think they will, but only your name written, that's written in a Lamb's book of life will get you to heaven. If you have a relationship with God through Jesus, that's that awesome power from God is, is at work within you through the Holy Spirit. God himself will work in your soul, empowering you to do all that will fulfill the good purposes in your life. God is able to be whatever you need him to be. And God is at work within you. Hallelujah. Because he can change you. He can turn your life around. You will be able to handle whatever comes your way with confidence and with faith, knowing that God is doing it for you. I need it. You need it. People need God to be Jesus for salvation, eternal life. You need Jesus for forgiveness of sin and shame and guilt. You need God for your very breath. You need God for your guidance. You need God's word in your life. For this, you will never hunger. You will never thirst if you come to me. That's what the word says. I am the sustaining bread that you seek. Jesus said in uh, John 6, 51, the gospel of John, I am the living bread, bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. The bread which I shall give you for the life of the world is my flesh. So I am statements, Jesus Christ identify himself as the great I am. I am the light of the world. I am the door of the sheep. I am the resurrection of the life. I am the good shepherd. Hallelujah. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am.
am the true vine because he is the I am and our scripture says God works all things according to the counsel of his will. I am whatever you need me to be. I needed him to forgive my sins and he did. You need him to forgive your sins and he will. He, it was the will of the father to send his son Jesus to be born of the virgin, to be crucified, died and buried, but yet raised up on the third day. Hallelujah. Through the blood of Jesus, our sins were forgiven. We are told in Romans 5, 8 that God demonstrated his love for us through the death of a son because of our sins. Even Ephesians 2, 5 tells us, even though we were dead because of our sins, God gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. And it's only by God's grace that you have been saved. Hallelujah. Ephesians 2, 8, as I close, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourself. It is a gift from God. So we, God, the great I am is whatever you need, hallelujah, him to be. You need him to be, and he is the gift giver. Grace is God's love and action. Grace is receiving the forgiveness that we don't deserve. Salvation is God's grace upon you and me. It is the gift of freedom from our sins that Jesus made possible by taking the punishment for our sins on the cross. So my question as I close have you accepted him today? And my next question is, will you accept him today? You heard that I am whatever you need me to be. You need him to be your savior. You need deliverance. You need God in your life. You need to know, hallelujah, that you're going to live eternally in heaven and not in hell. Jesus made it possible, but taking the punishment for our sins on the cross. But first John one nine says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You are a sinner. If you have not accepted Christ, hallelujah in your life, because we all fall short of the glory. All of us have sinned. That's the word. And the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Confess with your mouth that you're a sinner. Ask him to come into your life. You want a changed life, a changed attitude. You want to become a new creature. You want to take advantage of what God has for you in this world so you can be overcomers. You may, everything might be rosy for you today. You got a big house, you drive a big car, you got a good job. But I saw a picture. It was two holes in the ground where caskets go. And you know what? Those, those grave sites were the same size. We are going to go in it. But some of us are going to be resurrected with Jesus and some of us are going to live eternally in hell. The choice is yours. So that's it. That's the message today. I am whatever you need me to be. I hope this message was a blessing to you. Hallelujah. Share it with your friends and family. If they don't have Facebook, go to the, uh, my uh, broadcast on YouTube. Pastor Sandra Carter, The Spoken Word. If you'd like to give in the comment screen, you can give through Givelify by click, clicking on the link. If you know me personally and have my cell phone number, um, you can give through Zelle. Ask God if this is his will for you to, to be a blessing to this ministry. Until next week, share this broadcast. Study the words, the scriptures that I gave you because they will truly be a blessing to you. Until next week, have a wonderful day in Christ. God bless you.